welcome to Main Street Mondays. I'm Sarah Grunwald, Executive Director of Main Street Washington, and today I'm here at the Let Center for the Healing and Creative Arts with Debbie Farrell. Welcome. Thank you. So Debbie, tell me about the founding of the Let Center, because it's been only a couple years old, and uh, it's kind of got a fun story. Actually, I'm going to correct you. We just celebrated our fifth anniversary. I know time flies when you're having fun. We officially became a 501c3 on May 8th, 2014. Excellent. So this year when we do our Live After Five and we do our tube auction, we're celebrating our fifth anniversary. So we hope everyone will come out for that. Time really flies, doesn't it? Yeah, it it does. (laughs) Um, The the, uh, center started, um, I very bravely invited my friend Lorraine Williams and her husband Alessandro for dinner for her birthday dinner December of 2013 and after I got past the fear of cooking for Alessandro uh, then we were sitting around my dining room table over dessert and I was talking about the fact that when I moved to Iowa I had no place to create my art that I had a storage unit full of art supplies next thing you know if you know my friend Lorraine she went off on a tangent about how small towns needed Mm -hmm. more culture to keep young people here we both had read a book called Halloween Out the Middle Mm -hmm. about the exodus of young people and young families from rural America Mm -hmm. because of the fact that there was an opportunity the next weekend we're in the van we're going to Chicago to check out my favorite art center We did a quick tour of most of the Midwest, looking at different art centers in Cedar Falls, Waterloo, uh, Storm Lake, uh, Lamar's, and decided we were gonna do this. And so May 8th, 2014, we officially became a non-for-profit. This year will be our third year in the building is probably where the confusion Mm -hmm. is. The first couple of years, we'd have a class at the library or we'd have a class upstairs in the Federation Bank conference room or we'd have one above the cafe. We officially moved into this building three years ago, May. um, May. Have our, we'll travel. That was the kind of modeling for us. Exactly, (laughs) exactly. And this space uh, is the former row heating and cooling space. Yes. And the Buttons purchased it and renovated it for the Let Center. Yes, and actually they rented it, renovated, excuse me, renovated it to live upstairs and then they had a commercial space. But um, uh, Lorraine was tenacious about getting this for the center and they have been very gracious landlords. Mm -hmm. Uh, Just really, it's this building has great energy and we love the way they've renovated Mm -hmm. it. We love the location. So it's perfect for what we do. Right. So talk a little bit about Let's's mission and some of the classes you offer um, to the community. Sure. We've had a lot of question over the years about our name. Let stands for learn embrace and transform and we feel like art is not just painting or creating a card or something art is in the way you dress it's the what you eat it's the way you live it's your spirituality and so we have asked people to learn embrace and transform through the workshops that they take here or the events that they participate Mm -hmm. in we offer creative arts we offer some musical events Mm -hmm. we also offer some metaphysical things we offer a book club lots of conversation we're trying to get everybody to be very open-minded accepting Mm -hmm. accepted growing diversity in Mm -hmm. our community And so we think we're accomplishing that through the center. Mm -hmm. We also, it's really important to us to build a sense of community. There are a lot of people, which you may find surprising, a lot of lonely people Mm -hmm. that they need that sense of community. Mm -hmm. And so when we offer that up, it's, I mean, to me, that's one of the intrinsic values of what we do is I've seen lives touched. And I think one of the really cool projects you guys have done in the past, and I think it's transitioning out right now, is the Blanket Project. Yes. And um, you want to talk a little bit about the Blanket Project? Yes. We had a very generous donor who the first year donated piles and piles of fleece. And I'm not talking making little blankets. They were huge three-yard projects. And uh, we, for three years, we made uh, fleece blankets, double-sided fleece blankets, and we shared them between HACAP and uh, the police department's ELF program. And we are not doing that any longer. We've just run out of storage ability, so I've given all of our leftover fleece to 4-H, and they Mm -hmm. hope to continue that project. But I have to tell you, Sarah, um, and I get a little perclept when I tell this story, but the second year we did it, 
the policeman that came and picked up a stack of the blankets for me, um, he said to me, and he got a little teary-eyed, he's a big guy that you don't expect to get teary-eyed, and, and he said, you know, I have delivered these blankets to homes where children don't even have sheets. And he said, it gives me an opportunity to give and not be the bad guy going to the door. Mm -hmm. And so for me, that was just, we didn't make any money on that project. Mm -hmm. It costs us money. But for me, that's like leaving a legacy with what we do. Absolutely. Um, let's talk a little bit about what's upcoming for the Let Center. Sure. Um, you've got lots of really great projects and the tubes are returning, the fifth <laughs> annual tube project. Maybe talk a little bit about the tubes history. Yes, yes. Because um, I'm sure people have seen the tubes around downtown. Yes. And I am sad to say this may be the last year of the tubes. We may transition to chairs or another mm -hmm. thing. But yeah, when we first started, and I joke with Lorraine, I, I kind of give her a hard time. When we first started, Lorraine had a barn full of these water softening tubes. Yeah. We'll, we'll um, show yeah, one okay, in the video. Yeah, okay, you can show one in the video. Um, and um, she had this great idea the first year, let's have a fundraiser. She said, I don't want to take these to a landfill. Let's have artists take them and create a piece of art. And I remember distinctly during that board meeting, I laughed at her and I said, you will do anything to get rid of the blank in your barn, won't yeah. you? <laughs> and uh, now I'm eating my words because we're in our fifth year. It's our largest fundraiser every mm -hmm. year. And I personally own a tube from every year's auction and I plan to buy one this year if mm -hmm. Nancy Wood doesn't outbid me like she always does. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that has become the thing. Yes, yeah, she's everyone... my formidable competition. We have the same taste. but. Um, yes, we're having three workshops for people that are a little intimidated by doing the tubes. Mm -hmm. One is coming up this Saturday, which I think the airing of this will mm -hmm. be too late. But Donna Blair, who is a prolific tube creator, mm -hmm. she is teaching the three Excellent. workshops. And then on July 27th uh, in Central Park, we'll be auctioning off the tubes. Great. And this year we're partnering with hospice. Excellent. Uh, that's probably one of the things I'm proudest of is that each year when we do this, we share the proceeds with another non-for-profit. Mm -hmm. We believe that a raising tide raises all ships, right. that we should all be working in conjunction. Last year it was Latinos for Washington, and this year it's our local mm -hmm. hospice. Which we've done we Paws and More as well. We've done Paws and More. We did RAGBRAI one year. And I'm at a loss as to what the fifth year was. Mm -hmm. But yeah, every year we share the proceeds with another non-for-profit. Excellent. So if people want to find out more information about the Let Center mm -hmm. and when you're available here at the location, um, just remind us where you're located and what's, sure. what's the best way to get a hold of the Let Center. Sure. We're at 114 North Iowa. We're right next door to the Frontier Cafe in the old row heating and air building. Um, Unfortunately, I don't have a presence here in the location all the time because I'm driven by volunteers. Uh, if it's okay, I can give my personal cell phone number. That's the easiest way. Or the Facebook page. Oh, or, or the Facebook page. Yeah. We have a we have a website, uh, letcenter.org, or we obviously have a Facebook page, which is where you'll see most of what's going mm on. -hmm. Um, and of course, you can come by the center, but I got to tell you, I don't always have a volunteer here. Yep, you guys are here quite a few hours though, and right. you have that big rainbow open flag. So right. if you guys see the flag out, stop on by. They're here right. <laughs> hanging out and creating something special. Right. So is there anything else you'd like to tell people about the Let Center? Um, feel free to stop in anytime you see the rainbow flag out. Pick up one of our class schedules. We put out a class schedule of what's going on. The other thing I would love to put out is that we really are always looking for new ideas on classes and even more so someone that wants to instruct a class. Excellent. Perfect. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. We will see you next week with another episode of Main Street Monday. For more information about the Let Center, visit them on Facebook at Let Center and uh, letcenter.org. We'll see you next Monday. Thanks, Sarah.